not know who you are, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, like credits or what, how, how do you want me to? Yeah, yes, name and credits. Yes. Uh, yeah, my name is Emeroy Bernardo. Um, I'm a b-boy. I danced with a hip-hop theater company called Antics. Uh, Antics Performance. I've also danced with Culture Shock. I danced with a few international artists. Uh, founder of Family Business, uh, which is a competition crew in in SoCal. Um, danced with a few other projects here and there, but yeah, that's kind of like a little rundown. Okay. Danced with Mixed Elements for a bit, and yeah. Got it. Okay, so from that introduction, we kind of understand that you are a dancer, but from my personal standpoint of you, I know you as so much more. So. A dauntless player. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> so I would love it if you could share into the titles of your other endeavors and what else you do besides dance. I sell, I sell drugs to high school. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I. I run a social media marketing agency called Vision Paradox. We've been in business for about four years. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we started working with, originally started working with artists, but now we've branched out to small businesses, e-commerce, mm -hmm. and uh, we still work with artists, uh, but um, we've also discovered that, you know, the medical field helps out pay with the, paying with the bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, we then, hey, I also, I, I, I guess you can say I'm, I, I, my hobby is gaming, <laughs> and uh -huh. um, I run, uh, I also am going ham right now on my YouTube channel, uh, building that up and doing doing the same thing with my clients. So, yeah. Okay, so we have dancer, we have agency creator, we have director, we have founders of company. So your titles are like everything that I want to be in more, and I'm pretty sure a lot of our viewers here <laughs> want to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to start with the question that I kind of need to get out of the way first and just ask about how this quarantine, this lockdown, how is this affecting your work or your dancing or your companies and gaming how is that all? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, oh wow, that's like a very, uh, layered question right there. The first off, gaming, I've actually my I've increased though I don't stream it often. Uh, my Max Dean, my girlfriend who's also watching this right now, knows because she's seen me game play StarCraft until like three in the morning. <laughs> uh, so the amount of gaming has gone up because it, it, it's a nice. Decom way of decompressing and also stimulating my brain. Um, yes. In terms of work, it hasn't it hasn't affected it that much, in my opinion, because the the upside of what with my agency is that we're all uh, we're all virtual, so there's no overhead we have to pay, so there's no loss there. And a lot of our clients uh, are also virtual as well. They're more like personal brands or just creating content for them, mm -hmm. albeit. A lot of them, a lot of their work has stopped. We actually lost, well, we actually lost, lost one of our bigger clients uh, because their their sale, the revenue sales dropped. So they, obviously they couldn't afford us anymore. But you know, it sucks losing a client. But you know, there's things you can. Uh, it's just one of those things you can't control, and you focusing on that. Focusing on that just makes it stressful. But uh, so we just triple down on the clients that we're currently working with and creating content for them. Uh, and doing the social media marketing and everything, so it hasn't it been impact? It's been impacted, but not to the level that many people have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What else? What else is part of the question? Oh, has it affected? Has it affected my dancing? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just finished working on another project that I was. Uh, it was a, a quarantine type project, uh, that paid gig as well, and I'm also doing the video editing. Um, so. Uh, yeah, it hasn't affected it. Though I mean, I, I guess the main thing that it's affected is obviously that we're not. I'm not on stage as much. Yeah. Or um, missing like the energy is, is just you know you don't have the energy compared to what you are in rehearsal. Well, I'm an asshole at rehearsal, so you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure people don't miss that. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, I, I, I'm still practicing like every other day because mm -hmm. uh, obviously um, I want to keep my skills usable and sharp. And I'm getting older, so I want to make sure that I'm I can keep up with the young the young bloods. Yeah. So I still I still practice, um, and it's I treat it like a workout. Uh, I work on sp specific tricks or specific not tricks because. Uh, I don't. I don't have room in my place to do like tricks, but more like combos and concepts to help uh, just to keep um, keep the moves fresh, so that way it doesn't feel old when I do it. So <laughs> we have one question from our guest, um, and just to let you know, I'm just gonna keep like stopping for those kind of questions. But one of the questions is, do you play Final Fantasy VII? I haven't played the I haven't played the new one yet. Okay. Um, I've, I'm resisting temptation to buy any new games mm -hmm. right now because <laughs> I bought so many games in the early like phase one of the quarantine. I bought like both Assassin's Creed games. I bought Sonic Mania. <laughs> um, I got Starcraft, and uh, I saw and I also got a whole bunch of fan made Sonic games. I'm like, a really huge Sonic fan. Um, <laughs> So I haven't really touched Final Fantasy. One is because uh, the immigrant in me wants to be frugal. <laughs> so I'm waiting for it to drop the price, which might be a year, is obviously going to be a year from now. I'm but um, yeah, I, I've, see, I've seen all my friends stream it. I saw Joey stream it. I'm like, the temptation is so strong. Like the, every time we talk about it, like my, the insides of my body are like, it's a sign you should get it. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> Let's save money right now. <laughs> yeah. A lose win situation. Um we so that was, that question was from my friend Winona. I'm just gonna shout her out. Hello Winona. Um Thank you for the question. A guest from Japan here, so we are getting you. Oh. Um, what up, Japan? <laughs> it's not told you yet. I will uh, go ahead and answer a few of the questions myself in the meantime. Um, as far as the quarantine and stuff, how it's affecting me uh, dance-wise has been good. I'm still taking class. I'm still training. So similar to you, but obviously not working on tricks and stuff because I'm just too big for that. But um, you have to get, oh yeah, your aerial. <laughs> you got your aerial though. <laughs> a lot more games and been like watching more players play so I definitely am tempted to like get a start into that. Um, Dude you should I mean I I, I I that's one thing I love about you is like you're so supportive of the people you watch mm -hmm. <laughs> you are I'm seeing you like share all these players I'm like now I'm checking them out too mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do I want to dive into that world for a second so that's a world that I guess not too many people know about especially like viewers because I don't I don't usually get a lot, a lot of people talking about my gaming when they talk to me so how is gaming like, like what is gaming if you were to give it a definition to you um gaming hmm if I a loser stuck in their basement playing video games on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's one way to engage your mind in a different way. Because mm -hmm. it's different. Uh, every game, I think, has a different set of problems that you got to that you got to figure out. Yes. Um, and that's why I I, uh, I have a fascination with it, it's particularly right now with StarCraft, because it involves multitasking in the a level where you're trying to put out so many fires at once, kind of like real life, you know? <laughs> There's a whole bunch of shit happening. Oh, I, I got yeah. Oh, I earned my money. Now I got to spend this money to get this. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, oh wait, wait, we're getting we're getting into a fight, but I'm out of money. Mm -hmm. so, like so, it, it's got it's being able to manage resources and battles, and I think that's the the challenge I find fascinating with it. Uh, and it, it, and it's it's. Same thing with other games. Like uh, I'm trying to get into Warzone, but I'm like I have a tendency to rush, and I have a tendency to go solo. And I know it's a team game, so I'm like fucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, but I'm trash at that game. Uh, but it's all it's 
that game and it's it's different working because it's more green in the book 50th law the one of the advantages you have that you can have in i guess over other people or your opponents is is familiar familiarity of the environment because the more you know your environment the more comfortable you are the more you can execute what you need to execute yes so and then that's why like, that's why i like these games because it it, it Pull, it makes you think differently, and yep. uh, teamwork is something I'm working on. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. like the impact that it has on like youth and people that are up, how do you think it will affect them if they were to start doing it? How, how do I think gaming will affect the youth if they start doing it? Yeah. I think they'll be fine. I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. I, I feel like I feel like, excuse me, I feel like everything is just a projection of other people's fear or other people's lack of understanding of the benefits of it. Because, yeah. you know, I think people who like gaming is, or it's like a sport. Not everyone's going to, is going to be yeah. ma uh, like driven to it. Not everyone's going to be driven, is going to be, you know, driven to play basketball. Uh, yeah. But same, same thing with gaming. I mean, there's a lot of lessons you can learn with, within it. I also yes. think that it, if used properly, people can gamify certain aspects of their life like because yes. if, if when things we learn things better that sounds terrible like terrible unless we learn <laughs> uh we, we learn things faster in my opinion or better uh when it's a game because right. there's involved it there's a level of enthusiasm that we have versus when we're just sitting down and just things being like dr drilled down on us it's like it's yeah. in because there's lack of involvement so that's yeah. why i think games in I think are going to be a huge part of the future. Yes. Like whether, um, you know, it might, right now, obviously the popular ones are kind of violent all over yeah. the place, but it's also, it's also teaching uh, the importance of communication, teamwork, yeah. um, problem solving. There's a whole bunch of benefits to it. I mean, yeah. but to be on the reverse as well, too much of one thing is bad. You know, it's like, yeah. it, 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 so that just to balance it out, I'm not saying go all in 100%, Sorry, hold on. My mom just started yes, calling me. Yes. Stop calling me oh. about my taxes. <laughs> hold on, let me just text her. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, in an interview. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> she just called me about my taxes. She tried called me. Called me like an, uh, like ten minutes ago. Uh, but yeah. So, I think it's a a wonderful tool. I think that's how, um, I think, I think that's how Jordan learned a lot of his things. My son, uh, on his own, he learned how uh, because he was able to like when Steph and I, when we were living together, when uh, when we had to do housework, clean the house, whatever, or I was out working or do, working with a client, the game was there, so he could kind of learn on his own. He learned how to read on his own. Yes. So I, I think it's. It's the future. It's nothing that we should be afraid of. Um, I, I mean, the classic uh, word of temperance is important. So, balance. So I, I want to share my thoughts on this topic. Gaming has introduced me to a world of things that I did not think I would be interested in. Um, cars and wrestling and fighting. Yeah different types of fighting styles like that I've never heard of before. So when I was younger, the only like type of martial art I heard of was karate. And we would always call everything karate. If it wasn't like <laughs> with your fist, it was always just karate. So karate. Certain fighting games like introduce my knowledge to like Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu and other things, Hadouken or whatever that is. But um, <laughs> all of those games and get knowledgeable on those subjects. When I like have to car, like I know, know what an exhaust pipe is. I know what an engine is. I know what a transmission is. I know what these other things. I'm frozen. Like Hello. a B-boy. Oh man, but yeah, that's just my quick two cents on the whole gaming aspect. I know a lot of you have experience in it, so that's why I wanted to ask your part in it. Um...
Um, I want to move into the parents hearing it. Filmmaking and the YouTube, the social media agency, and stuff like that. Like, how was that starting for you? How did you come? Like, what made you think to start <laughs> something like that? Uh, hmm. <laughs> that's a lovely question. A shout, oh, real quick, shout out to uh, Maxine. She just said, uh, "Undertale teaches empathy." That's a good game, right there. Uh, but. <laughs> Back to the question, uh, how did I go, go about starting it? I, okay, I originally started doing YouTube first, like, to, I guess out of context. I started doing social media for myself early on because I wanted to get into the whole online teaching thing back in 2013, yeah. teaching, uh, doing online tutorials, uh, and, then, and then obviously funnel people into, not obviously, but funnel people into a, an online course uh, and the difference, just to give, give some distinction, because a lot of people are like, why should I create an online dance course when I can get a lot of free dance tutorials out there? Yeah. The difference, the benefit of a course is that courses have teaching material that they don't share on on YouTube. It's organized. So yeah. it's literally, the cor courses are really one, two, step one, step two, step three, step four. Yeah. Free online tutorials work more like a buffet. You pick and choose yeah. what you want to learn. So it's a, so. Um, yeah, so just to give context on that. So I, I started doing uh, social media for myself, and then when I got to, um, started, you know, build funnels, got a course, one of, so like, honestly, like one of the uh, streams of income that's mm -hmm. helping me right now is my online courses. So, yes. So if, um, right, yeah, I'm not going to uh, go in too much into that, but yeah. Like, um, then from there, I, I joined Antics. We were about to. We we're going to perform a show in Philly. Was, I was super excited. My first show in the East Coast, yes. uh, and then I asked. I asked the director, like, "Hey, how are ticket sales? You know, is is going to be a booked house? You know, I yeah. want to. I want." And then she was, like, "I don't know. We'll uh -huh. see when we get there." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh hell no! <laughs> I want. I do not want to go there for like and perform for like three fucking rows." Uh -huh. uh, so, <laughs> I took. I, I took over the social media with uh, Facebook and Instagram and Instagram uh, advertising. Oh, well, there was no Instagram advertising at the time, so I drew, it was mainly uh, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook ads. And then yeah. before it was called influencer marketing, I reached out to a lot of local Philly dancers to uh -huh. do a back then shout out for shout out. And then from there we sold out. Uh, we sold out the show. Yeah. And then from from there, I realized I can do this for other people, so I started. I uh, started using it as an extra form of income along with the dancing. So started doing it for like I've stupid low prices when I first started. Um, like a uh, hundred bucks a month for people just to get just to start getting a body of work. Uh, and then from there, I, I got to a point where the workload was getting a lot, was becoming more and more. I started hiring people. Yeah. Uh, so and then from there, you know. Got some business partners um, who I'm not partners with anymore, but they're amazing uh, people. I got some people, you know, because uh, people have different visions. People have different like uh, yeah. involvement and in how much they want to be involved. So we kind of like decided to go our own separate ways. So um, what were they saying? Yeah. So from there, started the agency, started working with people, uh, and. Uh, here we are. I, I just started and approaching networking events, emails, uh, being relentless. Okay. If that, uh, the proper <laughs> word in in uh, reaching out to people yeah. uh, and uh, following up because what a lot of people do when they do when they for, when they're starting their business or trying to pitch their services to other people is that they yeah. one either sell themselves short and they they don't even start and they're like oh no I'm not good enough yeah uh, or two. Uh, and the second thing after that actually is they do pitch themselves, but they don't follow up. Yes. And and most of my businesses, most of my uh, clients come in the and respond by email two or three. Yes. So and then it started growing, and then then you got to a place I was realizing like shit, this is, I'm getting paid shit for the amount of stuff that I am doing for people. Yes. So then that's where I like had to, to reflect of how much um, how much am I really worth? Yes. So 
So yeah, and like because and then so that's where you figure out lifetime value of the customer and how much it's worth to them versus the value you bring to them. It's it's a it's a everything is an enrollment game. You have to enroll yeah. them into the vision uh, of what you have for them and into the services uh, yeah. that you can provide. Yes. So, yeah. love Diego. I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have, have another shout out from Brazil. Also, I'm gonna just shout them out. And question uh, from my friend Winona. She asked tips on gaining followers organically. You have any tips? Engage. That. So, so the growing organically in Instagram, right? On this fucking day and age, it's just so fucking hard. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> but oh, uh, say it back to Rosie. I'm not gonna tell her to f off. Though I just told her to f off right now. <laughs> so the uh, actual one. But um, being a friend with me means we get to curse at each other a lot. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, <okay. laughs> uh, I curse like a sailor, but <laughs> growing organically, and I, I guess that de also depends on which platform you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. I'd say, again, if you're focused on Instagram, it's super hard to go to grow organically on Instagram now because it's saturated. Everyone's a fucking dancer or fucking fitness model, whatever the fuck is visually appealing. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say what works now, and it's and I, and I know it works because I grew one of my accounts to like 10k uh, without ever was only posting one time a month uh, is engage engaging like actually commenting on people's shit they're like responding to your stuff like not just the comments you get but going to other people like who you think are similar in your industry and engaging in their audience yes. and engaging when you go like really going into a rabbit hole, like there's like different levels of engagement. There's responding to the comments, then there's engaging going into your followers right now, like and going into any random person, commenting on them. Cool. Go to someone who is yeah. a fan of who, who I don't know who Matt Stefanina. Go to his page. Not just comment on his stuff, but comment yeah. on the comments in there, and then go to the people yeah. who comment. The way I think about it, it, it's it's still people are too focused on the, the media and forget about being social. Yes. So it's again the engagement is the biggest thing because again social becomes is before the media yeah. and it's not sexy to for a lot of people because I see people not respond to comments uh, to to respond to the comments but or to even go to an engagement but they, the only reason the only reason people blew up to begin with is because they had a community. And the only way you build a community is if you engage with people. Mm -hmm. And people, at the end of the day, are the people that blow you up. Yes. So, so that's, I mean, everything is like the usual post, like everyone has different uh, different times to post. Yes. Because if you look at, if you look at your, your insights, um, obviously you want your content to be visually appealing, especially with everyone, with the, everyone does this. Yeah. So you're you're competing with that. So yeah. bright colors generally work best. Uh, faces like it's a human psychology. Mm -hmm. Faces. If you look at any YouTube thumbnail, mm -hmm. <laughs> David Dobrik. Yeah. I don't know if you watch MXR MXR plays. Like uh -huh. there's a whole bunch of people. A PewDiePie, Gary V. They always have a face because people will connect with a face instantly. And yeah. if they and not just that, but they'll also connect with the emotion with it. Yes. So, uh, yeah, bright colors help. Like mm -hmm. I, for any of my YouTube th thumbnails, I generally go with the color red because it's obviously the most eye-catching and it's part of my brand colors. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like there's a whole bunch of like tips to go into the artistic media mm -hmm. part. But something that you can do right now, if you're not artistic, you don't have a videographer or editor, the mm -hmm. fastest way you can grow grow for yourself is to engage because it's easy to just be behind a the phone and just start talking to people yes um sorry about my pauses and my connection everything is just it gets weird when i have to start these but thank you for your tips um i want to share kind of my thoughts on this and say everything you said 100 degree 100 percent agree with 100 um, degrees also nah. just 
uh, continue. Like, if you have the content, uh, this is going to sound a little weird, but you have to kind of save your content so that you can release it piece by piece. So, like, release yes. every day. Um, but don't post, like, six things in one day because then you kind of, like, lose that engagement. I don't know why that's, it works like that. It's a weird... It's system. Instagram's thing. It, it, it depends. Like, the, just to follow up with that, I, I experimented for two months posting four times a day. Mm -hmm. The growth was nowhere, and then I switched to, to posting one time a day. It wasn't, uh -huh. it wasn't any different. But then it, it could be different for yeah it could be different for people different people's uh you know uh different accounts everyone has different engagement different audiences but yeah so yeah but i schedule, schedule. i agree that you have to be mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i was trying uh -huh. to show i'm just going to show something soon but keep going got it i wanted to get into your <laughs> So I don't know if people know this, but Emroy is actually one of my favorite family streamer, gamer people. Him and his son are like these expert players. Um, and I really hope that <laughs> they like, start, start something because I've never seen a family gaming channel before. Is this, are you guys kind of the first to start that are also doing this? I honestly don't. I also don't know, because uh, uh, I, I I looked into it briefly, uh, mm -hmm. but then who is on my that's my door right now? Hold on, who, hold oh. on. Who's, who has a guest? No, I shouldn't be having guests. My lights on. Okay, thank you. I got I left my light on in my car. <laughs> All right, we're gonna walk. We're gonna walk, we're gonna walk and talk while I fix this. Doing it. I forgot to put my mask on, but I'm just going outside real quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so paranoid about it. But I forgot. Um, I didn't really do any research mm -hmm. because uh, it was just something I knew I would enjoy. Thank you. I knew I would enjoy with my son. Yes. Like, because I, I was looking for a game for both of us to play because there's not, because there's not a whole bunch of uh, couch co op games like yes. but when i was growing up we had fucking uh what was it mario party or uh -huh. even younger i had bomberman like oh uh -huh. like there, there, we yeah this is like super nintendo like we didn't we didn't have a lot of like we games we can sit down to and play together so mm -hmm. i was looking for a game that we can both play together mm -hmm. so i we tried fortnite because it's cross platform i can play pc yeah. you can play playstation 4 didn't like it yeah, but he, we did, Dauntless, did that stuck, uh, yep. and yeah, we we figured, and I, am of the belief of documenting, as much as I can, uh, and which is why I vlog a lot. Yes. And uh, I wanted to document it, but not have to worry about the camera. Yes. So obviously, so what we so we went into uh, that's how we got into the streaming because we can document both our gameplay. We can you can see the interactions. You can see me. I obviously get mad at my son when he's not playing. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's it's it, and it, I know it's also going to be one, uh, one of the more memorable things we do, uh, because I growing up I loved playing yeah. video games with my mom on the Super Nintendo, uh, uh, playing the Ninja Turtles game, uh -huh. and then I and I remember it was like three in the morning or two in the morning. Yeah. We got to fight Shredder, like the last, uh, the last <laughs> level, and we yeah. lost. And oh. we were like, I remember looking at like, at my, my mom, like, did we lose? We spent all these hours fighting, and then we lost. But it was like, it was cool because we went through that kind of journey together, fighting the like the good fight. And that's again why I like these games because it's like you, if especially with people you get to share with and you care. Like you, you get through, deal with these challenges that have no yeah. real world risk. Mm -hmm. Like you can go through a battle. You, you, like if you, I don't know, if you play in any R online RPG games, you can go through a fight, and still be alive. But you yes. can get, you yes. can, but you'll experience uh, your your mom, uh, your mom. I saw the word your mom. <laughs> uh, you can get the same. You can get through like the same breakdowns, the same arguments, and all that stuff. 
probably not in a like life threatening situation, but like you'll experience breakdowns, but also experience breakthroughs, and not die, except your, yeah. except your, except your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was like a one time thing. I was it was the one time I remember just staying up super late with my mom. Like, mm-hmm. And I, I was, like, blown away at how late it was. Like, oh, man, my mom's letting me play up late. So just to a- answer <laughs> win. Yeah, like, every time, uh, all the other games we played was Street Fighter, and I, I got mad at her because she kept beating yep. me. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so those were the ones. Um, me to a ton of, more than just gaming, but just in general, dance um, and gaming. He's excess my knowledge in the social media realm and things like that so i just want to say thank you for all of that i am a part of his team that he founded bam biz even though we're like not able to rehearse and do things right now i was fortunate enough to join at the time before all this no happened. Match. <laughs> i really like enjoy that team i do want to segue into that and say similar or act similar how you thought of creating that team and what made you want to create a different team because you were saying you were on antics and something sparked that made you want to create fanbiz what was that uh well fanbiz was created well officially it was created back in 2004 oh. so yeah yeah, like we rebranded back in two thousand nine. Like now we're going back. When you see when when Java walkies was a normal thing in <laughs> Ultimate Brawl. So um yeah, I started FanBiz well technically back then it's called E S U I, which is called Elements of Style Under the Influence. They're a combination of different names. Uh for of like 'cause my my co founder Mark. Mark, the co founder, his brother's uh old crew was called UI and they're B boys. They're, but they're called, oh, fuck, what was it? Unique Intentions, something like that. Mm-hmm. But we wanted, to, we wanted to use the UI, but different. And we were young. So we were like, oh, yeah, under the influence. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we were cool. <laughs> we, I, and I, I started this, so what, Mark I, was 16, I was 18, and we started this because of a debut. Uh, and those of you who don't know what a debut is, it's, like, it's the equivalent of a quinceanera, uh, but for Filipinos. So we did that. Uh, we performed there. And in the middle of rehearsal, I still remember it, when we were rehearsing at the basement of a church, I, I remember envisioning us of like on stage. And back then, the big teams we looked up to were Cabo Modern, PAC, and Team Millennia. And those were the top three back in the day, in my yeah. opinion. Um, so uh, then I imagined us being at that level, being able to compete at that level, eventually yeah. becoming champions. And I, I just, it was like, I saw like a flash forward into the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then in my head, I'm like, this can be something more. Like, not possible for me to like study and rest and get all of what I needed for that. So I eventually left the team, but not because of like commitment, but because of personal drama. (laughs) But um, yeah, I do see how commitment and like being a student and doing way more than what your play can handle can like scare you off from staying on a team. But yeah, yeah, thank you. A lot of of it's really just volunteer work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, because you're like extended volunteer work. You're just you know, you're because you're, it's something you love doing. You're mm-hmm. you're willing to go that that extra mile. Yeah. Uh, I mean that that's kind of like one of the main things I'm trying to I'm aiming to do with with temper tantrum is like every rehearsal there's a game plan, and mm-hmm. thankfully all the rehearsals we've done we've always majority of the time ended like at least an hour or or half an hour early because the game plan was finished, and I don't try to force the issue and try to move forward. So it's like. You know, mm-hmm. I think a lot can get done if people were smart with their time. It's not the amount of hours you get, it's what yes. you do with your time. Yes. And drugs. Okay. I to open this to any other questions that people 
may have. I see <clears throat> a few viewers here still. Hello, Ooh. Ashley. Hello, Rosie. Hello, everyone that's tuning in. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask. This is my guest today. His name is Imroy. Um, creator, filmmaker, choreographer, dancer, gamer, dad, parent, and just all the titles, you know? Um, I, I literally, I look up to this man and he probably doesn't know how much of an impact he's made in my life. But if you guys have any questions for him or me, go ahead and ask. <laughs> Anything regarding to social media, since I run a social media agency, those of you guys are hopping on, or dance, since I've been dancing since I, I was eight. Have, I have one. Nice to meet you, Ashley. What is your opinion on this number one app that is sweeping America by storm right now? TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> yes. You said that like I fucking years. told people about this shit two years ago. You know what I I, I said I straight up said this after a grits. If those of you are who are watching from the grits after a workshop I taught, and I said I gave a quick social media tip: get on TikTok now because it's on the rise right now. It's number five. This was early, like or late 2018, early 2019. Mm -hmm. I was telling people get on it now. Get on it now. Organic reach is super high. And motherfucker, one person can say, yeah, can confirm. Maxine, I was fucking preaching this when it was called Musical.ly. <laughs> and one motherfucker said, no, mm -mm, Instagram is the one that you need to be popular on right now. And in my head, is like, no, bitch, you're fucking thinking about the right now, but I'm thinking about the year 3000 that you need to be on what's next because Instagram, the, the Instagram goldmine is fucking dug out. Mm -hmm. Like, TikTok is, or is the new, right now, the current gold rush. There's yeah. plenty of opportunity to blow up. Or mm -hmm. uh, there's, it's, re it's so really good right now. There's advertising, and I know there's, I know there's a huge thing that's happening with the privacy issue right now, but if they do, do well, I think they can recover. But I think the main thing I have to fucking say is, like, I told you also. <laughs> I fucking told you so. <laughs> Get on it now, because... But within the next, especially being everyone being at home, within the next probably 12 months, it's going to be oversaturated. Yeah. And then it's going to be the next thing. And then, and I feel the same way with LinkedIn, uh, where organic reach is, is just as well. I know people who are doing or killing on there. It depends on your audience. It depends yeah. on who you're trying to reach. Yeah. Uh, because, if you're, again, if you're trying to reach, you have to keep in mind who your audience is. Like, I know... Uh, Instagram makes sense for entertainers because you're in, they're trying to entertain the people. But if you're trying to reach, like for me, like my company is trying to work with ma head managers or the CEOs of companies, it makes yeah. sense to be on LinkedIn because that's where they're at. No one, no fucking head of a company is just going to be chilling on Instagram. Though most of them do, but they're not looking for a social media manager. They're not looking for a videographer. They're looking. They're just looking there for entertainment. They got to understand the different mentality that people have on these platforms. Yes. So I think I saw a question about being a micro influencer. Oh yes. Okay. Any, um, my thoughts on pitching yourself. I don't. I don't know what your. I, I. It's really hard to say what, what to say about you being a micro influencer because I don't know what your angle is. Mm -hmm. But uh, the first thing I would say is know your data, know your insights, because no one gives a shit how cool your picture is if it doesn't lead them to sales. Mm -hmm. So, I don't like, or your quote your video. So you have to approach it in a way that's beneficial. You have to think of it as, as a win-win, um, not just like, oh, I can be an influencer. It's like, no, how will I fit with this brand? Say like, I fucking love this. Me and my girlfriend say I love you, and I say I love you more. If I if I work with this, I can probably work with them. Like, oh, me and my girlfriend, I, I don't know, or uh, have we got for hypothetical now have a couple's Instagram page. I can pitch to them. We can, we have, I don't know, not just 100K followers, but how good is your engagement? Again, yeah. going back to earlier what I said, if you engage with other people, they'll probably engage with you. Yeah. So uh, how good is your engagement? Oh, we're getting, at, at, of that 100,000 followers, we're getting at least 10,000 views, yeah. 5,000 likes, X yeah. amount of comments. Give them stats 
<laughs> uh, give them stats of, of why working with you is beneficial. Not just that, like why why are you reaching them out, reaching out with them to begin with? Like, and yes. also come come up with your initial campaign ideas. Don't reach out to them thinking like they're gonna come up with the idea for you. It's like no, no, um, I you come up with the, a, a campaign idea for the next three posts. I will create this type of content for you. Like for I don't know for this. I'm gonna grab this piece of, of this headset. Oh, this headset I'm wearing right now, or like or a yeah. wireless headset. Like there, there's I can pro there's some startup headset headset companies that you can probably reach out to as a dancer or if you're a crew uh, you can probably pitch to them like oh we may only yeah. if you're starting up we may only have a thousand followers but we also have ten dancers at yeah. each a thousand dollars a thousand dollars a thousand followers each then you yeah. can then you can get an involvement of that whole group to start sharing that content so uh, yeah, if I think have a, get your analytics in point, get your campaign idea uh, ready. Um, I think there was a was there a follow up question with that uh, thoughts on the next uh, big the platform? Next platform. Yeah, um, I haven't really paid attention to it. I, I mean, I'm looking at potent like house party is a fun thing right now, but I'm I'm. Just looking at patterns. If you want to see what the next big platform is, look once a week in the App Store, the Google Play Store. Look at the top social media platforms in in that in the App Store or the Google Store. Look at for the top ten, and yeah. that's how I noticed that Musically or then tick, now TikTok was yes. blowing up because it was like top thirty, top twenty, yeah. top five, and then last year I was seeing that it was trading places with Instagram. Like back, in, it was a battle between both of them. Now it's yeah. solidified itself. Mm -hmm. So, and then it's also, yeah. Um, I think the next level of social platforms is going to be private, Got private it. communities. Yeah. So where people can access just J, like a private texting community. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you can, and then say J, you're going to be teaching in a workshop in Boston. You can text all of your people in Boston that you're going to be teaching a workshop. Because the thing yeah. with these social platforms is that when you do a blast post, not everyone is in the same place. Yeah. So that's what I think the next social platform will be more private. But I yeah. think that one that kind of blows up. But that's just yeah. speculation. I haven't done any pattern rec pattern and recognition yet, but that's what I noticed with TikTok. It was like, yeah. you, you see it, you see it. Oh, I'm so, so yeah. glad you asked me that question. <laughs> it feels so good to like let that out. <laughs> I have to um, confirm that Emroy did inform me of the TikTok and me starting it up years ago, way longer before it really blew up. And I'm just not a fan. This is my personal thing. I'm not a fan of like the new the TikTok dances and starting over that, but. Now I'm like, damn, what it did it, how much more would I be like accessible to people? And thank you. Thank you for informing me years ago. Thank you for still informing me. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I promise the next one I'll listen to you and I'll make that account or that whatever. <laughs> I, I told Liz the same thing back in 2014. Uh -huh. When I said Snapchat was on the rise, uh -huh. and she resisted, and she kind of joined the Snapchat Snapchat train late. Yeah. Now she asked me again, like, oh, she thought, like, what's the next thing? I was like, get your ass on TikTok now. Uh -huh. Now she's, I think, I think, in terms of engagement, she's, excuse me, she's killing it. Yeah. And I'm glad she didn't argue with me for six months before oh. getting on it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, and then I think Maxine just said uh, the community app. Direct, yeah, in, in the comments, uh, direct text. Yeah, that I think I'm keeping an eye on the community app. It's yeah. I think it's going to be, it's pretty uh, based from what I've heard about it and like just looking at how how people are kind of like putting a lot of priority or <laughs> acting like they have a lot of priority on the privacy. Yes. And then that's going to be a lot of one to one because one it's. The social media platforms are great because they, you get to see like a, a, a very surface level view of who the person is. Yes. Community app gives engagement. Like, like you can text 
they can text you like, hey Jay, I don't know, what should I eat for lunch? And you can text back, <laughs> I don't know. Like it's like, it can get that, you know, like personal because at the end of the day, again, being social mm-hmm. and then people want, eventually want access to you. Yeah. Like into a one-to-one level. Yes. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so any viewers out there really do take this into consideration. It's for business, it's for dance, it's for entertainment, whatever you want to whatever you want to do, um, just really look into the trending apps, number ones, or what's like moving up in numbers and things like that, and really try and get on those now so that in the future when they eventually blow up, you would already have the content, you would already have the following, you would already have a high engagement. So companies will just be like, oh, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. Um, yeah, and um, like, and even even if the app doesn't blow up, it'll prepare you for the next one. Yeah, because it because uh, before Facebook Live became a thing, before Instagram had a live feature, there was Periscope or Meerkat. Yes, this is what 2014, 2015, and I was broadcasting my classes live uh-huh. on Meerkat and on Periscope, and yeah. those behaviors can be transferable to the next one because, like Instagram stealing in Snapchat stories, you yeah. know, you could easily <laughs> those behaviors can be easily adapted to to when another social media platform kind of bites them, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Emroy, for this talk. How long have we been on so far? We started at like 5.03. What time is it now? 6.03, a good hour. Okay. Solid hour. I think we're we're good, unless you want to keep going. I'm good good to keep going. So I I, I actually, like, just, Decided to make this day just like a chill day because I was at the hospital all day. Yeah. So. Okay. Um. Yeah. I don't. I don't really. I want to uh, get the viewers to start asking questions, and I hope to get any of them. Um, community app, but I think we have a. You just explained all of that. Um, yeah. Any other questions from our viewers? <laughs> Um, I'd be better. <laughs> well, <laughs> Joey, uh, Joey works with me. Uh, Jabe, he does the videography. He does some of the social media for a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Joey, uh, Joey is an amazing. I think Joey. Those of you guys who are looking for a freelance photographer once it, and videographer once it's done, I think Joey is a is a is a really great uh, videographer. He's a great visual storyteller, which is one of the reasons I had to work with him. Yeah. Uh, and those of you guys who are also seeing MXPD, she's my girlfriend, also uh, my right hand, my right hand man and woman for Vision Paradox. Uh, so she helps. She helps me make me sound nice to clients. Because, <laughs> because sometimes clients, and this is like for this is their them not understanding, like, and but also like my frustration of like, why do we do this? Like it, it's almost like you know when you when a a doctor tells you his diagnosis or like but you, you're like why mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna do something else yeah. I think I'm gonna go outside <laughs> without a mask <laughs> so um, yeah but with her with Maxine she makes me go from like my original emails will be like <laughs> my original emails will be like oh you're a fucking idiot and like, uh, something like that uh, this is not how we do it uh-huh. and Maxine will be like we, we and she would translate it to we understand where you're coming from, but this is exactly what we do. Oh, God. It's like, because for me, it's like, why do you hire us if you're going to question us? Mm-hmm. But then again, it's, it goes back to, you know, try, it, being empathetic and knowing that this is, they don't understand it in the level we do. So we, we have to try to, uh, well, Maxine helps me with sounding nice and explaining it to them. <laughs> So yeah, she helps. She she helps a lot, and we also have our own podcast where we just uh, spill tea. Oh, you should be a guest eventually too, dude. We just shoot the shit and talk about random things, spill tea. We call the awkward tea party. Yeah, we just oh, <laughs> we <fine>. we <laughs> uh, talk about some client stuff that we've we've faced, we've experienced. We never drop names, but we talk about certain yeah. things that have, we've experienced. Like yeah. one of my first clients, uh, we were we were. <laughs> Um, it was a burlesque type company, and I I didn't know 
Uh, and, yeah. and that's where I was. I started experiencing getting dick pics because it was we were imagining a burlesque dance company, and obviously they were beautiful women, and then guys are trying to trying to get at get at them. So they would they were DMing the the group, the the company, but they were really DMing me their dicks, and I'm like, oh. what the fuck do I do with this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh so, my. Yeah. Yes, I just want to say if this ends anytime soon, that apologies, but this will be shared hopefully to my story um, if you guys missed it. And yeah, um, uh, bringing back up, like I have a lot of friends that are like, like just into different things. So I wanted to get you guys on here to talk about your different paths and stuff like that. Um, for any viewers, if you guys tune in again, I will have another guest talking about sharing all your facts with that. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, yes. Um, any goodbye messages? Anything you want to say before we end this live? Um, goodbye messages. <laughs> um, <laughs> goodbye. <to> <laughs> um, I Use this time, whatever you've got, to pursue what makes you happy. Yeah. I uh, I left. I used to work in the animation industry. That's fuck. <laughs> and the whole a whole other life. I used to work in the animation industry. The last thing I worked on was the Harry Potter movie. Uh, and the last video game I worked on was on the was the Tomb Raider reboot. So like, um, yeah. <laughs> so um. And I left a high-paying job to pursue what was more important to me. Uh, and uh, I honestly, I'm a lot happier. I, I'm not. Actually, I think I'm getting paid a lot more now. But, <laughs> but I used to get paid like um, 45 an hour, which is like an insane amount at the time, like for a fucking 24-year-old. Um, yeah. um, but I left that because certain things were much more important to me, and I got to a point in my yeah. life where I was like, is this all there is to it. I got like, yes. Mm, I felt like there was more to more more to life than just what I was doing. So, yes. um, be okay with pursuing what makes you happy, uh, but also be aware of what comes with it. Yes. Because pursuing your passion doesn't always mean you get paid right off the bat. Or maybe just pursuing your passion means doing something on the side that makes you happy. That's, yes that away from work um, yes. but whatever it is you know when you're 80 what's what's the thing that you want to least regret like whatever yeah. like if you like one of the things I always I not always but I ask myself when I'm when I'm thinking about a decision is like will I regret this when I'm 80 is this what <laughs> and uh, if it is like then I either go for it or I don't it, ha it, it what matters to me is like when I look back in my life, did I regret the things I did? Yes. And then, because you only have the one life, you know, that doesn't mean like do drugs, cheat, or do any of that stupid <laughs> shit. <laughs> but like do the things that generally build yourself as a person. But this is just my perspective. Yes. Uh, oh, I love you. I love you so much. Again, you're a huge I love you too. impact in my life, despite the language and other things <laughs> dude I'm glad on your, I'm glad you're on biz I was excited because I knew you were you were you were hesitant about joining mm -hmm. uh, the day of auditions but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. super glad that you got to be a part of it because like in my head I'm like whoa this is like two different worlds colliding and I'm like <laughs> Deshaun doing Daniel's choreo this is crazy oh my God. <laughs> I can't do Daniel's choreo because it fucking hurts my back Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, and I feel, oh, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you so much, and I will be talking to you really soon. Yeah, okay. love you, dude. Bye.